3ds Max now features a new renderer known as Autodesk Ray Tracer, or ART. It's a physical simulation of the way light bounces off of surfaces. It works in conjunction with a material known as the physical material. I've got that in the material editor already. We'll open up Slate Material Editor. I've got a standard diffuse white and double click on that to expose its parameters. It's the familiar standard material. Then I've got a physical material. Double click on that. You'll see that it's kind of reminiscent of the Mental Ray arch and design, including some presets. We'll get back to that in a minute. In order to get a valid preview in this Slate Material Editor, we need to switch our renderer over to ART because the physical material will render in the scanline renderer, but it won't look right. It's really only supported by newer and smarter renderers such as ART, iRay, Mental Ray, and V-Ray. Let's go over to our setup. We've got render setup here. And swap the renderer out. Instead of scanline renderer, let's choose ART. We can close that dialog. Go back to our Slate Material Editor. We may need to select these in order to refresh the swatch. And now we're seeing them displayed in the ART renderer. That's a standard material rendered in ART and physical material rendered in ART. We'll now assign the physical material to all the objects so we can do a test render. In the perspective view, just drag a selection rectangle around all of those objects. In the material editor, select the physical material and then click assign material to selection. Now we can do a test rendering, minimize the material editor, click in the physical camera viewport to give focus to it. I've created a camera in the scene, set its aspect ratio and its exposure in advance. Once that's selected, we'll do a test render, click on render production, and the ART renderer is progressive, similar to iRay. It'll keep rendering until it reaches a predetermined level of noise. We'll look at how to control that in the next chapter on rendering. Our test render has completed, and this is what it looks like with an ideal diffuse material on it. Let's close the rendered frame window, go back to the material editor, and create a couple more physical materials. You can create them from the material section under general. Drag that over into the view, double click it to activate it. And let's give it a name, we'll call it Stairs. Then we have presets from which we can choose, similar to Arch and Design. If I choose some of these, it will create extra nodes in the graph here. For example, if I choose Satin Varnished Wood, now we have a bitmap node and a bunch of other stuff. Be careful with this because these bitmaps are part of the 3ds Max installation. And if you actually use this material, you might have problems with future proofing your work in a future version of 3ds Max. To simplify things, I'm actually just going to delete all of this stuff. Select that and press delete. And just play around only with the color here. So we've got our base color. I'm going to click on that and then just make it darker and more saturated. Okay, cool. Now we want to assign it to the object. Select the stairs. And once again, click on the node in the material editor and then choose assign material to selection. That one's done. Now let's also do the handrail. Make another physical material, drag that over. Double click it to expose its parameters. And this time choose the preset of polished aluminum so that we can see that better in the view here. Double click on that sample and then right click on the sample and choose show background in preview. And now we can see the effect of that polished aluminum material applied to a sample sphere. We'll now assign that to these railings, select them both with the control key. And once again, select the node in the material editor and click assign material. We're ready to do another test render. Once again, give focus to the physical camera and render production. And this will take longer because it's calculating the reflections of these physical materials. Once that's completed, we can see that we're getting some shiny highlights on this polished aluminum. All right, back to our material editor. And I just want to talk a little bit about these parameters. 
If we go back and forth between this stairs material and the physical material and look at the parameters, we will see that the main things that have changed are the roughness and the metalness. For this polished wood, we've got a roughness of 0.64 and a metalness of zero. For the polished aluminum, we have a roughness of 0.29, a lower roughness, and a metalness of one. Because this is a physical simulation of a material, the most important property in determining the size and intensity of highlights is the roughness. The aluminum material is a good example of that because I can change the roughness and see how that affects the reflections. Set the roughness down to zero and we get a highly polished, perfect mirror here. If I set the roughness up to one, then I get a perfectly ideal diffuse material. That's the most significant parameter here of all. As the name implies, metalness controls the amount of metallic property this material will have. And with a value of one, it will be a complete metal. And with a value of zero, it will have no metal. Okay, well, for this one, of course, we do want a metalness of one. And if we want it to be a little bit more polished than it was, instead of a roughness of 0.2, I'll give it a roughness of 0.1. And now it's going to be a bit more chromic. There are many other interesting parameters in the physical material. We won't be able to cover them all, but I want to mention one other important thing is that by default, you can't control the intensity of highlights or reflections. If you need more control over the highlights, you can go into a mode in which you're able to produce non-physical effects. And that's up here, the material mode. Switch that over to advanced. And now you see there is a reflection section that wasn't there before. And now there are two roughness parameters. The roughness that was up here at the top has now moved down here into the reflections. And I can see that because it has a roughness value of 0.1, which was the value I previously entered in up here. This is the roughness for the purposes of reflections. And this is an additional layer of roughness that you can use to produce, for example, terracotta type effects. Once you've enabled advanced mode, you have the ability here to attenuate the reflections or to give the reflections a different color than the base and so on. That's a very simple introduction to the physical material. Again, it works really best with ART or other modern renderers. We'll look at ART a bit more in the following chapter. And that finishes our chapter on materials and mapping.